Welcome back to another episode of the e-learning series on GFSM, the Government Finance Statistics Manual. In this episode, I will introduce the sectors and subsectors into which an economy is grouped for statistical purposes. Among the economic sectors, I will highlight two fiscally relevant segments, the general government sector and the public sector, and explain how they are defined. At a first glance, it seems quite obvious. Government finance statistics cover the government. But what does government actually consist of? Some would assume that government covers the ministries, municipalities, provincial governments and the like. Others say this includes the central bank. But what about the government owning shares in corporations, such as energy companies, postal banks or local water treatment companies? And how does government relate to the concept public sector? A practical and sound definition of the structure of the economy is needed to prepare statistics that are fit for use. This will help making fiscal analysis meaningful and data internationally comparable. GFSM builds on the standard statistical concepts set out in the system of national accounts. In macroeconomic statistics, the resident economy is divided into five sectors. The general government sector, non-financial corporation sector, the financial corporation sector, the household sector, and the non-profit institutions serving household sector. The general government sector is particularly relevant for fiscal and macroeconomic analysis. In addition, the broader concept of the public sector is relevant to assess the full extent of government activities and associated risks. The public sector is a hybrid of the general government sector plus the public non-financial and financial corporations controlled by the government. How are the five main sectors and subsectors of the resident economy delineated? To understand the concepts, let's see what types of entities are covered and what the main economic activities of the respective sector are. Let us start with the general government sector. Which entities are part of this sector? Well, obviously, government units. These units are unique legal entities and are established by political processes. They have a special legislative, executive or judicial authority over other units. And they serve specific economic functions, such as the provision of goods, or services on a non-commercial basis, or the redistribution of income and wealth. Their activities are primarily financed through taxation or compulsory transfers. In addition, general government includes non-profit institutions that are controlled by government units. For all those units, GFSM defines five subsectors. Budgetary central, extra budgetary central, social security funds, state governments, and local governments. Let's move on to the next two sectors, the non-financial and financial corporations. Corporations are typically legal entities. A central characteristic is that they operate with the objective to engage in market production of goods and services. The non-financial corporation sector covers units engaged in the production of goods and services, such as food, furniture or cars, the provision of legal or real estate services. The financial corporation sector typically includes banks, insurance corporations, holding companies and mortgage lenders. Note that this sector also includes the central bank, which is not classified as a general government unit. Two other sectors complete this presentation. The household sector, which comprises all physical persons and includes the self-employed. Finally, there is a typically small sector that consists of non-profit institutions that serve households and includes professional societies, trade unions, charities and philanthropic relief agencies. These five sectors should be defined consistently for all macroeconomic statistics to ensure that data and concepts can be used across the different frameworks such as the national accounts, government finance statistics, the balance of payments or monetary and financial statistics. In many countries, the National Statistical Agency maintains a central register of all entities constituting these economic sectors. Going back to what we said earlier, for fiscal analysis, the two relevant concepts are the general government and the public sector. Let me get to the analytical value and purpose of these two concepts. The general government sector covers the core part of fiscal activity and typically involves units providing public goods for free or almost free. The term general means that all government levels are covered, irrespective of the institutional, legal and political structure in a country. In other words, general government comprises the central, regional, provincial and local governments, as well as social security funds. It may also include universities, hospitals, schools and other government units that conduct their business on a non-commercial basis. Because the structure of government differs across countries, the general government sector offers the best international comparison level. 
At this level, analysts can understand the relations between the government and the rest of the economy, both in terms of flows, such as taxes and transfers, subsidies and the like, and stocks, such as debtor-creditor relationships. For example, how much is the government borrowing from or lending to other sectors? But the general government sector does not cover all fiscally relevant activities within a country. Governments may also be engaged in commercial and non-commercial corporations. These are corporations controlled by the government through the ownership of a significant majority of shares, also known as public corporations or state-owned enterprises. Adding public corporations to the general government sector produces the public sector. Public corporations can be found within the non-financial corporation sector and the financial corporation sector. Governments typically own or control significant shares in some banks, insurance companies, national airlines, industrial corporations or local water treatment companies. For fiscal analysis, these corporations are highly relevant because they can affect the fiscal position through profits and losses. They may require ongoing financing from government or conversely, contribute to government revenue. In some cases, they provide financing to the government. They can be engaged in quasi-fiscal activities or acting on behalf of the government to implement policies, for example, through student loan programs. These corporations therefore need to be taken into account to get the full perspective on fiscal strengths and risks and fiscal activity. Let's summarize. GFSM builds on international statistical concepts to describe the structure of the economy and to delineate the general government sector and the public sector. Applying these sectorization criteria make fiscal statistics comparable across countries and also consistent with other macroeconomic data. The GFS manual contains a wealth of guidance, examples and reference for compilers and users.